Hey, I'm Lucas Paganini, and in this video, we are gonna practice some web animations. So, for this particular video, I was really inspired by this shot on Dribble by Farzan Farouk. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. And he did this e commerce page for Nike shoes, and it has this feeling, this motion design here of the shoe just kind of going over the card and having this drop shadow increase. So I'm imagining that this is what happens when you hover on top of the card. So this is what I want to do today. So I gave this to my design team at Unvoid and they provided me with this Figma file with all the spacings already corrected so I can just go directly to the code with this. So imagine that a designer handed this off to you and then now you are in charge with actually coding this animation. So this is the natural state of the card. As you can see, we have the shoe here contained inside the pink uh, rounded square. And then if you hover, then the shoe increases. It actually also rotates a little bit to have this feeling like it's re you're really stepping with the shoe really interesting and the drop shadow also increases while this happens so this is what we're going to do today before we start coding i just want to say that i will do my very best to explain to you every single thing that i will use throughout this video to code this particular animation but if you really want to learn web animations if this is really important to you i have a course on web animations well, currently is not launched yet, but there is a, an open waiting list. And if you join the waiting list now, you will get a huge discount when the course is launched. And the difference between doing my web animations course or just, what, just watching those videos that I'm doing here is that in my web animations course, I will take you from the very basics until more advanced cases on web animation. So it will be a linear progression. Also, in the web animations course, I will teach you not just how to code a specific animation. No, no, no. I will teach you the actual tools and the mental model for you to understand how they work so that you can create any animations. Like, how can I create any animations and do this as a video and to show you how to do the animations? I can only do this because I know the fundamentals and the tools and the mental model around web animations really well. And this is exactly what I teach in my course on web animation. So if you're interested in that, consider checking out lucaspaganini.com slash web animations. It might just be exactly what you're looking for. Anyways, let's start coding now. Without further ado, uh, let's first start seeing the spacing. So let's inspect this Figma file. Um, as we can see, we have 24 pixels of padding from left, right, and top. But from the bottom, uh, it's a little bit different. So from the bottom, we have 16 of padding from the 16 of margin between the pink area and the title of the product. And then from the title to the bottom of the overall card, we have 20 pixels. So I'm going to start by coding this. So I'm going to go to code pen and I will create a new code pen. I'll leave the link for this code pen in the video description if you want to check it out. So I'm definitely going to change this title later, but now let's just call it playground. So I'm going to create a div with a class of card. So first off, I need to include CSS reset because I don't want the default browser styles to get in the way. So now that we already have that, let's start by changing the color of the body. So on Figma, we have this blue color here. So let me grab that and I'm going to say that the body has a background of this particular shade of blue. All right, cool. Um, now I'm going to say that the card 
has a background white. Let me just check if it's an absolute white. Yes, it is an absolute white. Okay, so card background is white, but we can't see the card yet. Why? Because it, it has zero height and zero width. So let's change this by adding the padding to it. So it's 24, 24, 20 in the bottom. So cool. Now we already have something here. But this is pretty weird. So let's centralize it. Uh, there are many different ways to centralize it. Um, I really like using display flex. So I'm just going to use that. So use display flex in the body. I'm going to say that the minimum height of the body should be 100 viewport height. And I'm going to use justify content center to centralize the div horizontally and then align items center to align the div vertically too. Cool. Nice. Working. Uh, I increased the size here now. I hope it wasn't a problem before, but who knows. Okay. Now that we have that, let's add the border radius. So the border radius that we have here is 64 pixels of border radius. So let's put 64 pixels here. All right. Um, and now let's put some content inside of it. Um, so here inside the card, I will add, uh, I will add first the title. So in this case, I'm just going to use H3 for the title. This is really going to depend on the heading levels that you have in your application. But in my case, I'm just going to use H3. And the title is going to be Air Jordan Retro. Cool. Now, um, this particular title here is using League Spartan, which is available as a Google font. So I am going to go to Google Fonts here, and I will look for League Spartan. Cool. So I can see from Figma that I only need the black variation of this font, which is the boldest variation. So instead of importing the entire font, I am going to customize my import to only include this one. So the way that I do that here on Google Fonts is by uh, League Spartan, regular, no, no, I want black. Oh, cool. Select black 900 here. Cool. So I selected black 900. So Google fonts gives me a lot of links to add to my HTML. So I'm just going to copy this here. Just going to copy this. Going to go here in my HTML. I'm just going to throw this up at the top. So you can just ignore this. Uh, I'm even going to put a comment here. So Google fonts. Start or actually start Google fonts. And then here I'm going to say and Google fonts. So you can just ignore this section because it's just adding this font to our code pen. Now I'm going to say that inside my card I have an H3 and this H3 should have League Spartan as the font and the font weight should be 900. 
which is unnecessary because I'm only importing font weight 900, but by default, the font weight is actually 400. So the only reason why we didn't have to add font weight 900 to get the boldest version is because we're only importing the boldest version. So when I told the browser, use League Spartan, the browser was like, okay, <laughs> I only have 900, so I'm gonna use 900. But it's good to be explicit here because if you eventually in the future added support for the 400 variation or any other weight that would be closer to 500, to 400, then the browser would actually use this other weight instead of the 900 by default. So you should explicitly say that you want font weight 900 just to make sure that you're getting the font weight that you really wanted here. Okay, the font weight is right now, but we are not yet rendering our font exactly as the designer imagined. So uh, there are a couple of things missing here. First, here on Figma, everything is in caps lock. Uh, this is actually small caps, not exactly caps lock, but i um, not going to go into this detail right now. And also, the font size is not necessarily the one that the designer intended. So uh, let's make sure that this is all correct. So the font size should be 16 pixels. Uh, which it already is, but right now it's only that because it's the default browser behavior, but I prefer to be explicit. Also, since we're dealing with font sizes, I would rather use one RAM, which by default is equivalent to 16 pixels, but in case the user has any visual disabilities or any trouble reading small text, they can increase the size of text in their device settings, and this is going to increase the size of, uh, of one RAM. So this makes sure that the text size is more accessible. Anyways, the next thing is that we need to use text transform uppercase to change the text to uppercase. All right, cool, cool. All working now. Uh, so we already have the title. Um, let me just inspect this here to see if I have all the right properties. So I have my card. As you can see from the computed values here, the card indeed has 24 pixels on top, uh, right, left, and 20 on the bottom. All right, all good here. So now let's get into the pink area in the card which is the area that contains the image. So first, I am going to add a container. So div with the class. And this div is going to be the pink area. So let me say that the background here is pink. This is not the right shade of pink, but I'm just defining anything here just to have something. Um, let me just grab the... oh. This has a fixed width and a fixed height. So it's 256 pixels of width and height. So I'm just gonna use that. So width, height. Cool, okay, we can already see it. Now, uh, first let's add a margin top in our title because we forgot to add that. So the margin top that the title has is 16 pixels. Okay, so 16 pixels of margin top. All right, this is correct. Now, I also forgot to, to align it at the center. So text align center. Cool, now I think now we're done with the title. Now back to the card image container, the border radius is 40 pixels. So let me add this here, border radius 40 pixels. All right, this is off. This is already looking much better now. Um, I'm also gonna add a padding to the body just to give us a little bit of room to breathe here. Cool, so now I have this padding on the top and on the bottom. All right, 
Now, the next thing that I want to do is to actually add the image here. So now I'm going to put the image inside of the card image container. And now we have a problem because CodePen doesn't allow free users to upload images. I'm paying for CodePen so I could upload an image, but then you wouldn't be able to do it yourself if you're using a free account. So what I'm about to do is I am going to download this image here as a PNG. That's it. Nike shoe. I'm gonna put it in my desktop. So the image is here. Now go to a website to convert. Uh, so convert image to base 64. And here we have this website, base64 image.de. And what you can do here is, so you're, you're going to notice in a second, but basically, if for whatever reason you can't use a URL in the image source, like the case that we have here with CodePen, what you can do is you can convert your file to base64 and then you can copy this entire thing here, this gigantic piece of code here, and in the image SRC, you can put this entire monstruosity here, and it will actually load your image. Instead of you pointing to our URL and telling your browser to download the image asset in that URL, and place it in this image tag, you're putting the entire contents of the image compressed in base64 directly in the image source. Cool, right? Uh, I mean, incredibly ugly, but cool. All right, so this is the structure that we have now. So what I'm going to do is inside Inside the card image container, there is an image. I want this image to be 100% of the width of the parent, and the height should also be 100%. So I want it to be contained inside the card container. Uh, actually, this the height is awful. So the height should be altered so that it can preserve the image ratio. Okay, um, but actually 100% was a bit too much. Let me try 90% because I don't want it to touch the borders. Okay, that's better. Um, I'm also going to have to centralize the contents of the card image container. So I'm going to use the same trick that I used in the, bo in the body. So display flex, justify content center, Align items center. Cool. Okay. That actually works. Cool. All right. Um, now, let me save this and let's get to the actual more interesting part of this video, which is actually coding the transition. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the card and I'm going to say that when we hover over the card, I want to make some changes to the image. So what changes do I want to make? Let's go back to Figma. Um, actually, let me fix the background color because it's not actually just pink. It's a very specific shade of pink. So let me use the right shade. Oh, it was actually purple. <laughs> okay, now I'm happy that I'm using the right shade. Uh, sorry, designer, if you saw me using pink. All right, uh, card hover. When the card is hovered, I want to select the image inside the card image container. So card image container. 
image. And then when we hover, I want to change the scale of the element. And I also want to rotate it. So since we're using Figma, honestly, like in production, I would just inspect this here and see the actual code that Figma is generating because this would give me exactly what the designer intended. So um, I could do that, but I'm gonna just code this by hand just to, I mean, you already saw that. So you could just, you already seen the, the end result, but let's do it one by one. So transform, rotate. And I'm gonna say that this should rotate like uh, 10 degrees. Okay, it's actually in the opposite direction that I want. So minus 10. Okay, cool. Um, on Figma is actually 15. So I'm gonna put the value that we have on Figma, 15. And then the next one is a uh, uh, shadow around the shoe. Now, you might think, oh, shadow, then it's box shadow. But no, it's actually not box shadow because let me show you what would happen if we tried to use box shadow. So, 444 black. Okay. Are you seeing this? This ugly this terribly ugly thing here, yeah. Uh, this is happening because box shadow puts a box puts a shadow around the box of the element. So every HTML element creates a box around itself, uh, a rectangle or square, or whatever. And when you use box shadow, you are applying a shadow to the box of the element, which is not what we want here. We want the shadow to actually outline the parts of the image that are not transparent. So what we want here is actually the filter property in CSS and the filter property, just like the transform property, takes a lot of functions. So the function that we want is the drop shadow. See? Now this is applying a shadow specifically to the parts of the image that are not transparent, which is exactly what we want. Now, of course, this doesn't have the exact measurements that designer uh, intended. So let's grab those measures from Figma here. So drop shadow. Uh, okay. Nice, nice. Also note that we are using RGBA here. And why are we using RGBA? Because the designer wanted to use black as the, as the shadow color, but he, did, he didn't want it on 100% opaque black. He wanted black with 30% of opacity. So that means that 70% of the black color here is transparent, uh, which gives us this much, much more natural effect to the shadow. Now, before we get to actually create this mood transition between the normal state of the card and the state when it's hovered, there's one thing missing, which is to make the shoe grow larger than the card area when we hover over it. So we do that using the scale function, which is used inside the transform property. And in this case, I'm just going to put 1.5 um, Sorry, there was no x. So 1.5. And now we can see that it is working. So when we hover over the card, the shoe grows larger than the card area, the card boundaries. And it we also add a shadow around the shoe. So now let's just add this mood transition between those two states. So the easiest way for us to do that is to go here 
in the card container image. And then we just add a transition. Let's say 300 milliseconds using the ease function, which is going to accelerate and then decelerate at the end. So it's not a timing function that has a linear speed. So this gives it a more natural feeling to the transition. And we're going to transition all properties. So we're going to transition all properties in 300 milliseconds using the ease timing function and there will be no delay so I don't have to add the third property to the transition. Done! This is working. Cool. Uh, just one accessibility concern that I have is that since this is a card it's probably something that should be clickable so since it should be clickable it should actually be a button and not a div so I'm gonna change this to a button and I'm also going to add a style here in the card to use the pointer cursor. Nice, so now we have the pointer cursor. Because it's a button, the browser adds some default styles to it, such as this border, but we can easily get rid of it. I just have to add border zero, done. Okay. This is it. We're done here. It's working. Look at that. How cool is that? So nice. All right. First, leave a like in this video, of course. Uh, if you want to learn more about web development, be sure to subscribe to the channel because this is exactly what I talk about here. You can also check out more content on Twitter and Instagram at Lucas Paganini. But if you also like the design, don't forget to go to Dribble and also give a like to Farzan's uh, Dribble shot. So that was it. This is the card animation working. I'm leaving the link to the code pen in the video description. If So if you want to go there, make some changes to the code, play with it, you can. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. This helps so, so, so much. You have no idea how hard it is to be a YouTuber in this age. It used to be really easy, I guess, but nowadays it's really hard. So if you like this video, please show us some love, help support the channel. We deeply appreciate all the support we can get. Also, again, if you want to learn web animations in a more profound way with more depth and really learning the tools so that you can create anything, not just, oh, no, now I know how to create a, a shoe that grows outside the card. This is cool, but this is probably not exactly what you need in the project that you're working on. But if you know all the tools of how to create web animations, you'll be able to create any animations that you want. So if that's something that's of your interest, be sure to check out my web animations course on lucaspaganini.com slash web animations. Also, I am the CEO of Envoid, which is a company that provides web development services. So if your company is looking to outsource a project or you just need more uh, excellent designers or developers to help you in your current project, be sure to check out more about what we do at envoid.com. All right, that was it for today. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one.